Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So about two years ago, I posted a chemistry video where I solved um, a multiple choice paper and uh, a bunch of you had some uh, questions about how I solved question nine, which involves um, balancing a chemical equation. So I thought I'd go into more details in this video. So um, let's start. So um, the question says, when potassium manganate is dissolved in water, um, the following reaction occurs. So what are the values of A and C in this balanced equation? All right, so the main question, um, the golden question, question of the day, um, what is needed for an equation to be balanced? How do we know that our answer is correct? How do we know that it is actually balanced, right? So um, in order to figure it out, there are two things, and that is, let me grab it real quick. So you need... So you have two sides of the equation. Um, you need each element to be equal on both sides. So if you have um, eight hydrogens on the reaction side, you need 800, 800, oh my god, you need eight hydrogens on the uh, product side. So for each element, they have to be balanced out. And then another thing you have to make sure is that the total charge on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are um, equal as well. So if the overall charge on the left hand side of the equation is positive 6, the overall right hand side of the equation needs to have, uh, the overall charge for the right hand side of the equation needs to also be positive 6, okay? So um, that's the main thing. And let's move on. So uh, what do you need to know before attempting a, to solve a question like this? So um, again, there are two things that you need to know. Let me just... So the two things you need are the oxid, or you need to know about, are the oxidation states and redox reactions, and then there's the acronym oil rig. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have uh, taken this with your teachers, but I will go into details. Well, I won't go into extreme details, but I'll try to explain it. And if you already know what it is, I'll place timestamps um, in the video so you can just skip it. All right. So, okay. So hopefully it should work now. Okay. Good. It's working. So. How do we find the oxidation state? So we have our periodic table, and you notice right here, it tells you the group number. So this is in group, this uh, column, this first column is group one, and then you have group two, um, so this is group two. Um, we're gonna ignore the little block in the center because these are the transition metals, and transition metals have uh, varying oxidation states. So they don't have only one, they can have multiple. So we'll move on. This will be group three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So um, now that we know what groups are, so they're basically the columns, and these elements are placed in these groups because they share um, similar characteristics in a way. So for example, lithium, since it's in group one, that means that it needs to lose one electron in order to form a octet. So an octet basically is sort of like a full shell. So um, you have your atom, you have two electrons, and then you have the second shell. Wow, my tablet is not loving the screen recording. That's okay. And then you have eight, right? So our goal is to get these two or eight. Since lithium's in group one, and at the top here it tells us that it only has three electrons. So this is what it looks like. One, two, and three. And you know that one electron on the outside, it doesn't like being all alone and it's just, it's, it's not stable, right? We want it to be stable. In order to do that, we're going to say goodbye to this guy, right? He's leaving. So what does that mean, right? So we have three electrons, right? And then three protons as well. And so this three tells us that there are three protons and three electrons. So now that we have, well, only two electrons, that means, so three protons plus three electrons, right? We'll give you an overall charge of zero. But now that we have three protons, but two electrons, then it will be a positive one charge, right? So lithium, that's why you get the group one. It has a positive charge of one. 
Now for group two is the same thing, but they're going to have a positive charge of two. Group three, same thing, positive charge of three. They're going Do you really want to gain seven more electrons? Or would it be easier for you to simply lose that one electron, right? So metals tend to lose electrons, whereas non-metals tend to gain electrons. So if we go on to carbon, our group four, basically they tend to share since they're sort of in the center, they don't really need to lose or gain in a way. Then you have nitrogen, uh, which is in group five. So that means they have a total of uh, five valence electrons, so outer electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's definitely easier for them to just gain three, right? To get that full octet. So they become, they'll have a total um, charge of negative three because they gained electrons, they gained uh, negativity. And then for oxygen, it's in group six, so it has six valence electrons. So in order to get to that eight, they need to gain two. So here, um, negative three, negative two, and you guessed it, negative one. And then here um, in group eight, they have the eight valence electrons. So there isn't really much for us to do. They're pretty uh, stable. All right, so now that we understood oxidation states and how to find them using our periodic table, We'll go on to the second part, so what are redox reactions? So these are reactions that involve reduction and oxidation, and so hence redox, R-E-D, O-X, and we use oil rig to remember that. So oil rig stands for oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, but you can add to that. So loss of electrons, also loss of um, a proton, or hydrogen ion because you know hydrogen has one electron so hydrogen has one electron so if you get rid of that one electron you will only end up with one proton so it's basically just a proton right so um, yeah so you have that but one other thing is oxidation also means gain of oxygen so Oxidation, oxygen, try to remember it like that, and reduction is loss of oxygen. So you do have gain and loss in both, but um, you get the main gist. So oil rig tells you which one. It's like it mainly about um, electrons, but you can expand the definition involve um, hydrogen ions and oxygen. So uh, let's move on. Oh yeah, so there's some extra info you guys can... Uh, I can tell you about. So you have the oxidation agent. So that's the element or compound that gains electrons. So it's the oxidation oxidizing agent. So it's basically like it's like an agent in real life. It's telling you or they help you find things. So this agent helps other elements or compounds get oxidized, right? So it helps them get oxidized by taking, by accepting their electrons that they lose. Similarly, you have reducing agents, right? So it's the element or compound that loses electrons. It helps other elements or compounds gain electrons, right? So it's sort of like the opposite. So the one that is the reducing agent is actually getting um, oxidized, and the one that's the oxidizing agent is actually getting reduced. All right? It's a little confusing, but once you um, get enough experience with it, it's not hard to understand. All right, so let's move on to the question. So here are the steps. So step one, you're going to assign oxidation states. Um, when you have a compound, so this is not an element on its own, you have the oxidation of the first element, second element, n elements. So n is, you know, arbitrary. We don't know how many elements there are. Um, we'll give you the overall charge. So um, let's start with the first one. So we have um, MnO4 2 minus, right? So the 2 minus is the overall charge. We know that oxygen from the periodic table is in group 6. So that means it gains 2 electrons. So it has a charge of negative 2, right? But then there are 4 oxygens. So 4 times negative 2. Wow, okay, my tablet is not being friendly. So the charge around the oxygen is negative 8. So what do we need manganese to be to give us that overall charge of negative 2? So say manganese is x and oxygen is y. So we have x plus 4y is equal to negative 2. We know what y is, which is, well, negative 2. So 
x plus 4 times negative 2 equals to negative 2. So x plus negative 8 is equal to negative 2. Move that negative 8 to the other side, so add 8 on both sides of the equation. So x will equal to negative 2 plus 8, which is negative 6. So the charge or oxidation state, a manganese in this case, is negative 6. Okay, um, we're going to do that for everything else. So I've gone ahead and done that. And you can check your answers with me um, later. So step two, we're going to identify elements with changing oxidation states. And in this case, it's only one element, and that's manganese. It goes from um, positive 6 to positive 7 and positive 4. So in this case, it gets reduced and oxidized. So we're going to identify the reduction and oxidation reactions. When manganese has a, pos a charge of positive 6 and moves on to positive 7, that means it lost an electron, it became more positive. So that is oxidation, remember oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons. So we put the electron on this side. Then here manganese gains two electrons in order to become, uh, in order to have a positive 4 charge, right? So that would be a reduction, it's a gain of electrons. But the thing is, we need to balance this. Here we have two electrons, and here we only have one. So in order to do that, we're going to multiply uh, the first um, little half reaction, or half equation, with uh, by two. So we have two here, two here, two here. Um, these two electrons, since they're on different sides of the little equation, you can cancel them out. Okay, so let's move on. Now, we're not done yet, because... You may think we have found it, but we haven't just yet. Um, we broke down the main equation into the reduction and oxidation parts. Now what we have to do is actually add them together. So the answer isn't A, where um, the value of manganese with the positive 6 charge is 2. It's actually B. So um, let's move on. So add up the equations. So what that means, you have everything on this left side. We're gonna play. We're gonna keep on the left side, and everything on the right side. We're going to keep on the right side. So, two uh, mn six plus plus mn six plus. Right. So we added these two. These two. Um, and then on this side you have two mn positive seven plus mn positive four. So you're just gonna add these two because they're the same. It gives you three. Here you have two. So that's why your answer is B. So here it's three because it's positive um, 6, so don't mess up your manganese. This one is positive 7, so this one is 2. And um, we already know what this is, it's 1, but we never actually write the 1, so this would be 1. Okay, so if we want to balance the entire equation, I mean we're done the qu question right now, but if you want to balance the entire um, equation, so we can break it down to two parts. So let's first find E. All right, so if you look at the charge, um, so we have the equation on this side, right? So here the charge, is, the overall charge is negative 2, and we have A, which is 3. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Water has no overall charge, so it's 0. MnO4 minus has a charge of negative 1, but there's two of them, right? So 2 times negative 1 will give you negative 2, and then here it has a charge of 0 because positive 4 plus negative 4 is 0. And then the OH minus has a charge of negative 1, but we don't know how many hydroxide ions there are, so we're just going to keep it as E. So this should be negative 6, so we want both sides to be equal like we mentioned earlier. So we want this right-hand side to also equal negative 6. So negative 2 minus E is equal to negative 6. Move the negative 2 to the other side negative e is equal to negative 4, so e is equal to 4. Alright, and now the last part, in order to get b, so the coefficient in front of uh, water, how many water molecules there are, we're going to now make sure that there are equal elements on both sides. So the number of hydrogens on this side is 2 times b, we don't know what b is. The number of oxygens is 12 sorry, 12, so 4 times 
4 times 3, which is 12, plus b. Here's a 1. We don't write out the 1. So uh, now we look at the right-hand side, because they actually have the answers for us. So the number of hydrogens on this case is just right here, which is the 4 we found. And the number of oxygens would be 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 2 here, which is 10, plus 4 right here, so that's 14. So we're going to equate them. So hydrogen is going to be 2b equals to 4, so divide the whole thing by 2, b is equal to 2. And it should give you the same answer if you use oxygen. So 12 plus b should equal to 14, and move the 12 to the other side, so b will end up being 2. And there you go, you have the full balanced equation. Um, that's basically how you balance chemical equations. And let me know if you guys understood it, if it was a little easier for you. Um, hopefully it was helpful. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in my next videos. Let me know if you want me to solve another one. And, you know, this example just involved one um, element with changing oxidation states. So what if we had more than one? You'll do the exact same thing. You'll create, you'll break it down into two parts, uh, the reduction equation and the oxidation equation. And once you balance that out, you'll add them together and you'll get your main equation, right? So that's about it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Make sure to share this uh, video if you found it helpful and give it a thumbs up. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.